Okay, this is going to be 4.3, last section in Unit 4. And then we're going to talk about hot spots, we're going to talk about coral reefs, and we're going to talk about bringing it all together with plate tectonics. Okay, hot spot formation. Hot spot formation is a relatively isolated area of the Earth's mantle, usually reaching down to the core mantle boundary where you've got an incredibly hot mass around, surrounded by just regularly hot mass of molten rock, um, ultramafic rising up. And we call it a mantle plume, and it actually moves over and it actually hits the lithosphere, kind of spreads out, but some of it actually moves through because of its hot, uh, less dense uh, characteristics, actually burns through the lithosphere, pops through the ocean, making pillow lavas, and they get taller and taller and taller until eventually you get seamounts, and then seamounts get taller and you get these volcanic islands. Problem is, is the plate motion moves this way because we actually have a mid-ocean ridge that direction, and we have a deep ocean trench that direction. Um, what's going on basically is the mid-ocean ridge is pushing this plate in this, this direction, and the plate moves this way, and sooner or later it moves off the plume, and the volcano becomes extinct. It jumps a new one. Uh, you can see Mauna Loa and Kilauea are the ones that are actually active. You can see another active one right here called Luihi, and Luihi hasn't broke the surface. It's still a couple miles uh, uh, below sea level, and that will be the next Hawaiian island. If you take a look, Hawaiian island, the island of Hawaii is 0.7 to uh, 0 million years old. Stuff is forming right now. And you go over to the islands, and they get progressively older as they go this direction. And they keep going that direction and keep getting older and older and older. And the explanation is, basically, is that we have quite a few of these hot spots. Um, there's a very large one here in Iceland, uh, which actually is pumping out much more molten rock than the Mid-Ocean Ridge. And why we have Iceland there sticking out of water. And uh, we do have Is uh, the Islor Islands right there, not as big as Iceland. But you can see there are other hot spots, some on the continents. There's Yellowstone's hot spot, Hawaii's hot spot, the Galapagos hot spot. Um, we're moving away from the ridges and we're moving toward the trenches. And when uh, Pangaea actually let it, um, started, um, there were plates um, located right here because North America was at this location, so there was an ocean. And we had islands sitting out here in this ocean, and they pretty much ran in, North America ran into them and actually ran over the top of them. And like bugs on a windshield actually got added to North America. Okay, so I'm going to show you this really quick um, animation. And what it's going to do is it's going to show uh, the lithosphere up here, um, the asthenosphere, and we'll actually talk about the core boundary down here, uh, the mantle plume goes through, and actually this is going to be the lithosphere. And it burns through the lithosphere, burns through the Earth's crust, pops a volcano, you can see it moves off the blob, that one becomes extinct, here comes the next one, it's moving off the blob, you'll see it break off right there, here comes the next one, and they get progressively older and older as they go that direction. And up through isostatic uh, rebound, they actually do sink, and the island may actually end up being touching the water right there, getting flat top for the guy out, and we'll end up with a seamount uh, way down here. Okay, coral reef, the life cycle. Um, we have an island, and if the water is warm enough, clear enough, and shallow enough, um, coral, which is all over the place, will actually grab hold, and we'll start making a, a reef, and we'll call this one a fringing reef, and this is the first level of life cycle for a coral reef. If the volcano becomes extinct, and you, you actually want that because if the volcano erupts, it's going to actually come down here, it's going to mess up the water, it'll make it too hot, it'll cloud it up with uh, ash and lava and other gases, and the coral will die. So this is pretty much an extinct volcano. Uh, weathering and erosion, isostatic rebound, and whatever, whatever happens, the island starts to shrink. And then we go to an older one, which is called the barrier island. You can see it takes the shape of the island. And if the island disappears, it's still underwater. We can drill and find the mafic rock down there um, underneath the coral, but we actually get what's called the atoll. And the atoll is the oldest of all the rocks. And it's actually a really beautiful thing. Okay, here is an island out in the middle of the ocean. 
Here is what's called the fringing reef. It actually goes right up to the island. Um, there are, or uh, there is at least one way to get into the island um, right in here and out to the ocean. You can see a really deep ocean, beautiful blue. This is a barrier island, which is actually protecting this island. Um, the island probably isn't getting a whole lot of rainfall, which would be the only fresh water. Salt water plants do occur, but uh, we do need fresh water for some of that. But the island is not very big, and you can see there are ac there's access points to this island, although it probably wouldn't be a great place to live. And then this is an atoll, and you see the, the nice, well, it actually looks kind of purple, but the nice, beautiful deep water on the outside, the shallow water on the inside, uh, coral, sand, uh, maybe even part of the, uh, the island still um, right down there. But this, this island does have an uh, this atoll, Ada Island does have a way to get into the lagoon. And lagoon, and this would be a lagoon also, and I guess this would be a lagoon. Lagoon is the area that's protected by the reef. So we actually do have really beautiful atolls. Here's another. Uh, this is actually in the, well, I don't remember where this was. But we can see there are islands with reefs around it. You can actually see atolls in the background where there used to be islands sticking out. And this is what I was talking about. If we do get global climate change and we do get melting of ice and we get the ri raising of ocean, these things are only clearing a few feet off the sea level and very dangerous location if the ocean does go. And even if it uh, doesn't go, hurricanes can actually cause 20 and 30 foot swells, uh, which can topple these islands. And here's another picture, beautiful picture of an atoll. And again, I don't remember where it is. These are all in the Pacific somewhere. But you can see the very large atoll shape. And then you can see the individual atolls that are in there. Uh, probably a much larger volcano that disappeared with uh, other sections of it disappearing later. But we have atolls inside of atolls. Marine provinces of the Earth. Uh, we start with the continental margin. You can see this is an active margin, very uh, thin continental shelves, much thicker continental shelves than passive margin. Passive margin, active margin. And then we have the abyssal plain uh, making a large section of the ocean floor. Then we have the mid-ocean ridges making up 23%. And then we have the deep ocean trenches which pretty much surround uh, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, not so much the Atlantic Ocean, although there is one down here for Puerto Rico. And there is one down here. And I uh, don't remember what this trench is called. But then we have uh, uh, the, another passive margin down here with lots of continental shelves. So those are basically the margins we talked about. Next unit five, we'll talk about the sediment that's out there and whether it's terogenous coming from land, hydrogenous coming from water, cosmogenous uh, coming from uh, space, or biogenous coming from life. Tectonics in the seafloor in review. Um, seafloor, a large section of it is the mid-ocean ridge, which is a divergent boundary where we pretty much only get shallow earthquakes and we get them very often. So these earthquakes are not very strong for the most part. Then we have oceanic uh, abyssal plains, and these are all the abyssal hills I was talking about. And the oceanic lithosphere plate moving this way. This is the African plate. This is the South American plate. Where we actually get ocean continental convergent, where the South American plate's moving this way. And here comes the Nazca plate, which is part of the Pacific Ocean. And the Nazca plate being more dense dives. And you can see shallow earthquakes only for divergent. In the convergence, you get shallow, you get intermediate, and you get deep earthquakes. So looking at the surface, the shallow earthquakes are really close to the trench. Intermediate move out, and then the deep ones go like this, and you get a much more spread out on the Earth's surface. And notice these are not the scale. You get oceanic-oceanic convergence. You get two oceanic plates. Uh, one of them, uh, this is actually the Australian plate. Here comes the Pacific plate. The Pacific plate being older or more dense or thicker or something takes the dive. The Australian plate comes in, gets both um, kind of bent up a little bit. But again, we do get the shallow intermediate, shallow quakes and then intermediate quakes and then deep earthquakes as that plate takes a dive and goes through all that stress. And then this stuff uh, melts and comes up and starts popping up volcanoes. Um, very much like what this one did in South America, in the Andes, volcanic islands. And the last one is a continental-continental convergence, and we are going to get those. Um, neither one of them is going to want to sink, so we actually get 
Memphis Indian Plate going under. And we do think that there's an oceanic lithosphere attached to it. Uh, India used to be an island, and it actually ran into the Eurasian Plate, causing the Himalayan Plateau, the highest average elevation, and does have lots of earthquakes, although they tend to be shallow and uh, intermediate. We don't get the deep earthquakes because the plate doesn't do, do the subduction that it did in the other convergence, the oceanic and the oceanic continental. And this is the end of the marine unit. And again, here we go with some reef. Uh, this would be a, a fringing reef protecting the island. Uh, we have more fringing reefs over there. Then we have from space, these are um, very similar to that probably the same location where you see a larger island in the atoll shape with smaller atolls inside. Beautiful location. Uh, but again, uh, not much land, don't collect much rain. It is sand, it drains through very quickly, so there's not a whole lot of vegetation, not a whole lot of animal life unless you go into the ocean. And that's it. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate it. Bye.